Advanced Custom Fields Pro. We know it, we love it. A lot of people use it in the WordPress space to create custom post types, custom fields, and really just extend what WordPress is able to do at the core CMS level. But there's one feature about ACF Pro specifically that was released within the last year or so that I just have not seen enough people cover. And it's extremely powerful if you want to do really dynamic things on your websites with the data you have. This feature is bi-directional relationships. And if you haven't heard of it before, I'm gonna explain what a relationship is. I'm gonna explain what how a bi-directional relationship differs from the traditional relationship field that was in ACF before. And then we'll go over a real world example of how you might actually wanna use this thing so you can kind of let your mind imagine a scenario in which it would actually be advantageous for you to go and utilize this. And hopefully we'll come out on the other end of this video with you having learned something something that you can utilize in website projects in the future. So if you're excited to learn about bi-directional relationships in ACF, stick around and we'll dive right into it. Real quick before we get started, I just wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Big Scoots. They've been providing high quality managed hosting solutions since 2010, and perhaps even more impressive than their technology is their customer support, which is some of the best in all of WordPress. I actually had the pleasure of meeting the Big Scoots team while I was out in Portland at WCUS 2024. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that they care about their customers and the greater WP community. If you're looking for a great hosting experience, I would strongly encourage you to click the link in the description and give Big Scoots a try. Now let's get back to the video. So a couple notes as we start here. The first thing is we're gonna be using ACF Pro in this video, all the tutorials and everything like that for this. So there's a link in the description if you wanna get ACF Pro. I'm using it because it's gonna give us the full feature set of everything the plugin has to offer. One other disclaimer I wanna make is that this is going to assume, this video is going to assume that you already know a little bit about dynamic data in WordPress, how it works, regardless if it's ACF or not, you have some sort of an idea of custom post types and custom fields. If you don't, for whatever reason, you don't need to worry, you can go over to wpdynamicdata.co. It's a free playlist here on YouTube that I put together that will absolutely give you everything you need to know to have a solid foundation for understanding dynamic data and how it all works in WordPress. So if you haven't worked with dynamic data, I highly encourage you to go watch those videos first and then come back to this, but I'm gonna assume that you do already have an idea and you just wanna get a little bit better of an idea with specifically relationships and bi-directional relationships. So let's talk about them. The first thing I wanna mention is what is a relationship in general? The best best way that I know how to teach this and explain this is to just give you some examples. And even though we're talking about like a kind of a technical concept here and there's like data that we're like relating and all that sort of stuff, it's really just basic English at the end of the day. What are two things in your mind, two content types, really in English, just two nouns that have some sort of relationship to each other? The list is basically infinite, but let's just think of a few. Books to authors, teachers to courses, real estate property to real estate agent. I mean, the list again, is it's infinite. Each of those examples have some sort of relationship baked into them. Now where it can definitely get confusing when you're trying to build out a data architecture for this is that ACF as an example has a relationship field. By default, and up until maybe a year ago, that relationship was just one directional, meaning that if you had a book as your post and you wanted to assign an author to it, you could do that, but then the book is now you know, the book has an author that's associated with it, but the author doesn't really have a book associated. You see what I'm saying? I would kind of classify the old way of doing it or like the limitation there being that that was just a one-way relationship and you couldn't have an actual true bi-directional relationship that just made your data like a lot better and a lot more cohesive and easy to work with long-term. When you have a tool now and a feature set that allows you to have true bi-directional relationships, you don't have to manage things independently. For instance, let's go back to the teacher and course example, right? So teachers have courses that they teach and those courses have teachers that teach them. In my mind, that's a bi-directional relationship. So let's say that Mrs. Jane Doe teaches biology 101. If we use a bi-directional setup for this, which I will show you here in a second, then you can manage that relationship on either end, so to speak, which is another huge benefit. If it's set up correctly, then regardless of whether you take a teacher out of a course or a course out from a teacher, every all of the data will stay the way that you expect it to stay. Now I realize all that is a bunch of theory, so why don't we just dive into ACF Pro and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about with these examples. So let me show you what I've done so far in ACF Pro just to get us started. I have two custom post types, I have courses and teachers in this example, and then each one of them has its own field group with just some dummy fields in here, right? We have for teachers, we have certifications and years of experience, we'll add to that in a second. And then for courses, we have material list and level just something to get us started. If you were actually building this, you would obviously have all of your custom data in there and fields that you need 
shifts, but this is just an example. So the next thing we have to be thinking about if we're talking specifically trying to tackle these relationships is how do we start? How do we relate one custom post type to another? Well, in ACF, what you have to do is you have to create another field and it's we're gonna start out as creating a relationship field. So if we go to courses, for instance, and we click on add field, then we come down to our field type and we search for relationship and we select that. Then we come down for our field label. Again, this is subjective, but what makes the most sense is normally what I think of. Well, if you were a person entering this data into the courses, right? You're entering a new course and you're going through the list, you're putting in material list, you're putting in level, whatever, and you're adding this course, what what would make the most sense here? It would probably be just like associated teachers or teachers that teach this course or something like that. Like whatever is like human readable and understandable. So I'm just gonna say associated teachers. So that's our label. Our field name would just auto populate. That's fine. You can change it if you wish. You come down to filter by post type. If you're new to this, you have to understand kind of what's going on here. And you have to, again, go back in your mind and be like, okay, I'm entering in a course I'm gonna, I'm, but in this field, I'm filtering by post type. So what post types do I wanna see in this field? Well, I only wanna see teachers in this field. I don't wanna see anything else. I don't wanna see posts. I don't wanna see any other custom post type that I have on here because I only wanna see a list of the teachers that I wanna pick from here that are going to teach this course that I'm currently entering into the CMS. You could go one step further and filter by post status, by published if you'd like. It's probably a safe thing. You don't necessarily have to do that. And then if there's taxonomies and things like that, we can get deeper into this, but that's kind of outside the scope of this right now. But these are just filtering what you're gonna see in that field, basically, what the, the list, so to speak, that you're gonna be able to select from. There's some other options at the bottom. Some are just, again, related to the filters and then the return format. You might have to change some of these things, but by default, I would just leave them alone unless you have an issue. We're gonna be fine here. So let's leave those and let's kind of just look through the rest of these options really quick. We have validation, which again, if you need to change that, you can. Slightly not important for what we're doing here. Presentation of how it looks. Conditional logic outside the scope of what we're doing. Advanced, we have bi-directional. Interesting. That's kind of the title of this video, right? So let's click that and see what happens. Now at this point, if you have a little bit of an idea of what relationships are, bi-directional relationships, and you've played around with dynamic data, you might be in the situation that I found many people in where they get to this point and they wanna do this, but now they're confused because in my opinion, ACF Pro could have done a little bit better job in this implementation. It works great, but just the UX and kind of like the understanding of it can be kind of confusing. You're gonna think, okay, I'm gonna turn this to bi-directional. And then maybe one, you're gonna think, okay, I'm done. I've seen that happen, That's you're not done. And then the second thing is if you do come down and you read all this stuff and you come down to target field, you're gonna be like, well, there's no results. Like, what do I do? How do I do whatever? And that's where there's a little bit of a problem. And really the main reason I'm making this video is you can't, from, from what we've seen so far in this video, me doing this example, we can't actually do this properly yet. We have to go back over to our teacher's field group and we have to make some adjustments there and then we bring it all together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna save the changes to our courses fields. Then I'm gonna go back over to our teacher's fields that we haven't touched yet and we're gonna say add a new field. We're gonna go through the same exact situation here. We're gonna go relationship. We're gonna come down here and we'll just say associated courses. And again, the reason I'm naming this associated courses is because we're gonna be putting in a teacher and we're gonna potentially be wanting to say, okay, this teacher teaches bio 101, math 101, what have you. So I'm literally just thinking in reverse now. I'm entering a teacher. What do I wanna see in this field? So I would come down here and I'd say courses. Filter by post status again, that's fine. We can do published. We already talked about everything else here. We talked about all of our different options. Let's go back in this case now to our teachers fields with our associated courses field and let's click bi-directional here. And now what we have is something interesting. Remember how before when we came down to our target field, we had no results. Well, now if we click into here, we have associated teachers. Interesting. The reason is because we have two bi-directional fields that can be related to one another. And again, this is gonna open up those opportunities of being able to manage things in both sides and have the data always be in sync. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click associated teachers. I'm gonna press save. I'm gonna come back over here to associated teachers. I know it gets confusing because you're talking about like courses and teachers and courses and teachers. You just have to try to keep everything in line from a mental perspective, but it, you, it gets easier once you do it. If we come down to associated teachers field here and we go to advanced now in our target field, we're gonna have associated teachers, which is this field. We do not want that to be the case. We wanna target this to the other field, associated courses. And after we save our changes, we are ready to go here. And I'm gonna show you exactly what this looks like now as you're entering data. Okay, so we have to head over to teachers now and through the power of editing, I'm gonna go ahead and add some teachers real quick. 
Boom, there we go. Now we have three teachers in here and they just have standard stuff. We haven't touched the, the directional fields or anything else. Courses, same thing here, power of editing. Look at that, magic. Okay, so now we have three teachers and we have three courses. Well, what do we wanna do next? We wanna relate those teachers to those courses and those courses to those teachers. Uh, so we can manage that data and do whatever we want on the front end. So let me show you exactly how this works. Let's go to Mr. Davis as our teacher here. And we have, again, certifications, years of experience, whatever else you would have in there. Down here is the only one we care about. We have associated courses for Mr. Davis. Remember how earlier I was telling you that you would be putting in a new teacher here and you'd be assigning the data and doing all sorts of stuff or editing it later. And you would just be coming down to this field. It makes more sense when you can see it, right? So associated courses for Mr. Davis. A couple things I want you to understand right now what is happening because you might be still slightly confused, especially because I did the little editing trick, right? The first question you have to ask yourself is where did these come from, right? Where did Algebra 101, Bio 101, and Chemistry 101 come from? They're coming from all of our courses that we have in our database right now, in our CMS. I put in three teachers, I put in three courses, so, and that field, how we set it up before, is just pulling all of the courses in to this field, more or less a list, right, for us to pick from. So if you're building this at home, you have to understand that that is how they got there, right? If you followed along, it should be there, but I want you to understand how they got there. Because again, there's even deeper ways that we can go into, not in this video, but in further videos, if you want, if you want I can explain it. We could have even filtered this list even more with those filter options. We could have had taxonomies and we could have only put like certain fields in there and stuff like that. Like, so there's a lot, there's a lot here, but I'm just trying to scratch the surface so you understand how to use it at the bare minimum. All right, but now for the actual important part with the bi-directional nature of this, okay? Let's say that we want to have Mr. Davis teach Algebra 101, okay? Makes sense, we're putting Mr. Davis into our database here and we're gonna say he teaches Algebra 101. Okay, perfect. I am not going to press update yet. I'm just gonna explain this to you so you can understand exactly how this works and the power of the bi-directional nature of it. I'm gonna show you right now. We're gonna have Mr. Davis teach Algebra 101. I have not actually saved this post yet. What I want to do, to illustrate this to you is I'm gonna go over to courses. I'm gonna to go to Algebra 101, and I'm gonna come down to the bottom here, and I'm gonna see, you're gonna see the same thing, but in reverse, right? If we were coming and we're, and we we're putting Algebra 101 in, we we're, we'd come down to the bottom, we can say, okay, who's gonna teach this course, right? We haven't done that yet. I am not going to click anything over here on Algebra 101. There is no data over here on this right-hand side. Watch what happens when I go back to the teacher, I go Algebra 101 here, I've selected it, that means it's on the right side, that means it's selected, and I click update, okay? And then I go back to our course, Algebra 101. I am not adjusting any data. All I'm going to do is click refresh, okay? And the, the CMS has reloaded, it has, it has you know, went through the data and everything like that, and it has automatically, not, not even automatically, it's just these things are related bi-directionally. So now we did something over there and it syncs up over here because they're bi-directionally related. This is the entire point and the extreme power of like a bi-directional relationship. If you need it, if it makes sense for your project, and if you are using ACF Pro in this case, that is the way to set it up. This is absolutely different than the traditional relationship field because the relationship field would not have done that. It is just a one-way one -way relationship that you can connect one custom post type to another custom post type. This is true bi-directional capability. Just to fully hammer this point home, I'm gonna show you the opposite direction just so you fully get it, right? So in this case, right, we want to, instead of adding a course to a teacher and then seeing it like this, maybe if you don't believe me yet, maybe you will after this, let's go over to our teachers again, okay? And let's go to Mrs. Wilson and let's see that she does not teach any classes, right? She doesn't teach anything. Maybe though, for some reason, she does also teach Algebra 101. So let's click Mrs. Wilson, let's put her in there. Now we have Mr. Davis and Mrs. Wilson that teach Algebra 101. Let's go back to Mrs. Wilson. Again, not adjusting any data, just reloading. And now she also teaches Algebra 101. To recap what we've learned here, I would say that there is immense power to bi-directional relationships when it makes sense in the back end aspect of you know, WordPress and specifically using ACF Pro. Not only do you now have double the relationships, so to speak, that you had before, you know what I mean? Like a, only one way relationship versus now a bi-directional one. Not, not only do you, can you do a lot more with that data that we can cover in future videos, you also have the ability to keep everything more in sync and to manage things from either side, whatever one makes sense, honestly, more so from like what you're doing and what piece of content you're managing at any given point. In this case, whether you're managing teachers or if you're managing courses. If you're interested in expanding on this concept, in future videos, what I can cover is how we can actually leverage this data, obviously on the front end, because that's what's most important, and the real advantages that come with that. And just as a sneak peek or just kind of like a mind exercise for you here, 
What you have the opportunity to do now is you have the opportunity to create like maybe a course list based on teacher. So you can filter courses specifically by teacher or you can filter teachers specifically by courses. So if you wanted to see all of the courses that Mr. Davis teaches, you could see that. But if you wanted to also see all of the teachers that teach Algebra 101, you could do that as well. With a traditional approach and having to manage like individual relationships, one, you know, one way relationships, it doesn't really work and it just gets out of sync and tough. So again, if your data architecture that you need for your project lends itself to a bi-directional relationship, it is absolutely the way to go. So if you got value out of this video, please leave a like below, I'd greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions on this video, anything that I covered, please leave a comment. Or if you have any examples of things that you're working on or anything like that, or if you're not sure if it would work, let me know in the comments down below and I will definitely get back to you and possibly make more videos with those examples. With all that said, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it and I will talk to you in the next one.